Today in the news, we got a sort of preview of what FSR 3 would look like, Windows 11 being paused, and more. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA, or Intel, or it could be AMD too. Anyways, one of the big new features of the RTX 4000 series of GPUs is of course DLSS 3. The third generation of DLSS offers what Nvidia likes to call frame generation, or fake frames as we like to call them. So far, Nvidia has only shown it running on the full set of DLSS features. So you got the OG DLSS 2, which is deep learning super sampling, and then you have frame generation on top of it. From now on, I think we should call the frame generation part of DLSS, DLSS DLFG. Of course, you can disable the OG DLSS2 and have DLFG on without having the super sampling. Now, why am I talking about this feature? Well, because it seems like Nvidia hasn't locked it down as hard as we thought they would. Igor's lab recently discovered and tested DLSS3's frame generation, but instead of upscaling the image with DLSS2, he tested it with AMD's technology FSR2 and Intel's tech XESS. That's because all of these upscaling solutions are available in one specific game, Spider-Man Miles Morales. So this is a bit of like a preview of what we're gonna see with FSR 3.0, because the backbone of the frame generation is now FSR 3. So what did he find? Well, when we're talking about image quality with DLFG, it looks the best with DLSS for the upscale. Second best is AMD as a very close second. It's just a little bit blocky and XESS is last being a little bit fuzzier. Keep in mind that we're looking at uh, an image, a single PNG, and in motion, you'd be hard pressed to see the difference. On the other hand, if we look at the actual frame rates with DLFG, FSR in performance mode with DLFG has the highest frame rate. Then as you go down the quality, settings, DLSS and FSR battled it out, and you got XESS with a noticeably lower frame rate. Just to clear something up here for those waiting for FSR 3, know that the resulting image will very likely be identical to what Nvidia is pushing out here, or what we have with FSR 2.1 and uh, DLFG. What makes DLFG possible isn't something that Nvidia built, it's actually part of Microsoft's DX12 API. Microsoft gives the magic sauce and all Nvidia, AMD and Intel have to do is manage the resources that the DX12 API need. Things like the buffers, sync, and uh, calls using their own API. Nvidia is using the optical flow SDK 3.0, I believe. So Nvidia likes to lock them down, AMD tries to make them open source. The only possible difference is the speed at which these resources are managed. Kind of like ray tracing, you know? They all can do it, it looks the same, but it depends on who has the fastest light ray calculations. Hopefully that made sense to you. Speaking of Microsoft's secret sauce, the newest update of Windows 11 has been paused two months after its release. The update in question is the 22H2 update, and it was paused because apparently it came with massive stuttering and lag while playing games on Nvidia GPUs. If you already updated though, well, there's a fix from Nvidia directly. Just make sure that you have the latest game ready drivers installed. As for me, I think I'll stick to Windows 10 for a little bit longer. What about you guys though? Did you update to Windows 11 yet? Are you at the latest update of Windows 11? And if so, How's everything going so far? Moving on, it looks like Cyberpunk 2077 now supports FSR 2.1. Let me go and check that out real quick. Yep, it does. You know, the kind of sleeper argument for FSR is that it doesn't just affect PCs. By effect, I mean, make the experience better. The Xbox Series X and S both support the tech, so you'll get better frame rates on those too. Neat. Then in AMD news, we got a game bundle. If you buy an RX 6000 series of GPUs, you can get two free games, the Callisto Protocol and Dead Island 2. Wait, wasn't that game canceled? Oh, it got canceled and then revived by another developer. That's pretty cool. The Callisto Protocol, on the other hand, looks phenomenal. Anyways, this is actually a pretty good deal for some of the mid to lower end GPUs like the 6700 XT and below. Except the 6500 XT and below, they get one game only. It's a pretty good deal if you were planning on buying one of those games. I remember when I got my 290X, it had Bioshock Infinite, Crisis 3, and Far Cry Blood Dragon, and I'm not gonna lie, those games were awesome and definitely worth buying with the bundle. I paid like 400 bucks and I got $150 worth of games. That was awesome. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it. A comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, uh, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.